Hello, hello guys. How are you doing today? Welcome to your show, our show, everybody's show, your Farmer Hub TV once again. Thank you for joining us and always being um, a loyal friend. And, um, you know, with everything going on around the world now, um, our farmers still remain important and we have to, you know, feed the the world so thank you farmers for always doing a wonderful job for sticking to um what you know how to do best and um our show today is um a continuous series about um vegetable farming and um, we have a wonderful guest on online today who's going to be sharing his experiences and um talk to us about um vegetable farming as well as you know from our our you know our topic, uh, it's um, production of um, vegetable and um, the, the art and science, you know, of making profit from vegetable farming. So um, I have a wonderful guest on online today. His name is Mr. Olao Lua Bamiboye. He's um, um, the um, agri agribusiness specialist of um, Hares and Harrods Farm. Um, they are into um, farming as well, basically um, everything about farming. So Body is going to be um, basically talking to us about um, vegetable farming and how we can maximize profits in that today. Um, so thank you for joining us once again. I'm going to bring him online, as you know, we always do, to introduce himself better and to give us a little insight about who, who he is. And um, let's go on with the show. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Olaolua. Can you hear me? Your, your audio is mute, on mute. We can't hear you. Sincere apologies. Oh, there you apologies, go. Please. Loud yeah, it's all right. It's, it's okay. It's a, no problem. <laughs> Good day. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Thank you. Good evening. Good day. Yeah. All right. Thank you for taking time out. I know you're on transit from the farm and um, you just um, stopped by the way to talk to us. I'm very grateful and I know very well that all our viewers are grateful as well. Uh, can you please just give us a little introduction about yourself, who you are, what you do and things like that? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ayo. And thank, thank you for the privilege to be on Farmers Hub TV. It's like a privilege. I, can't, I mean, like, I, uh, this is, I know, is a world stage. It's a global stage, the global brand. So, I mean, that you're exhibiting uh, what farmers are doing. I, I don't take it for granted. It's Thank not you right. So, much. You know? so I'm, I'm grateful for that. So, I'm Olaolua Bamiboye uh, of Hairs and Herald AgroAlight Limited. Uh, we are into vegetable farming, we are into livestock farming. We went to uh, farm management consultancy and uh, essentially we also meal feed for livestock farmers. I mean, we try as much as we can to bridge gaps between uh, mm. farmers, the gaps, are, the challenges that farmers are experiencing, the, that they are facing. We identify the solutions, we magnify them. I mean, just for us to see that the challenge is real. And mm. then we propose a problem, a solution, and then we, we solve it too as much as we can. We collaborate. We don't do it alone. So that's why today I wear a lot of caps, partner with some people. I also work for some people, like full time, trying to maybe put structure to their business. Mm. So we are not alone in agriculture. You can't do it alone. You know, we have a lot of mouth to feed in the world locally. Food is what everybody will eat daily. If you are fasting oh, yeah. after three days, I mean, you, you break your fast. You have to eat food. So. People eat every day, mm. newborn babies, older babies, I mean, matured and the like. So we can't do it alone. So that's why, I'm, like I said, I'm wearing many caps and I'm mm. open to conversations and next collaborations here too. That's why I'm happy to be here for a wider reach and then, you know, for collaboration in the industry. Mm. Thank you so much. Um, uh, we're very grateful to have you here as well. And you, um, we're glad that, um, you know, there are farmers like you trying to feed everybody. Um, a lot of people don't know how, you know, it's difficult for a farmer. We, we especially in Nigeria, we always still seem to think that, um, you know, farming is all about how it's done in the olden days, in the villages mm -hmm. and things like that. But, you know, far farming is way more than that. Agriculture is a global business. It's um, 
in fact it's top on the list of every business because whether you like it or not you are going to eat and that's why i always try to tell everybody without food you can't do anything you understand Absolutely. so yes. i'm always grateful to you know meet people like you that you know despite how things are back home we are still you know putting effort and trying to make things happen you know and it's one of the reasons that brought up this show because i just want to appreciate you know my people and um you know show the world that we're actually doing things you know and um you know it's not just um the western world we in nigeria too can achieve a lot we know how to do these things you True. understand so um you know like i said i'm grateful my first question for you is right. the name of the fam I, I just have to ask you live i know i've <laughs> asked you you know uh, behind the yeah. scene how did you come about it oh okay thank you very much for that i mean uh so i, I learned something new that whoever asks questions i mean is, is interested in you or what you do that's why the person oh, asks yeah. questions so definitely I'm, I'm more willing to say it. so uh back then in the university days uh during the, during the university days uh mm. i have a partner a business partner and uh, you know we we have this business doing we have i mean traction we are making impact and the likes and i said i don't want to just do business casually i don't want to just i mean i know things answer to their names they answer to what they are called mm. so i just felt okay fine i don't want to just name it anything i want to be inspired by by god by the holy spirit i mean i believe in god so oh, yeah. and then yeah that that dropped in my mind i mean it mm. was just in my sleep that i conceived that i mean that dropped in my mind so I so love the name. Anywhere I go to, some people resonate with the name. Oh, wow, I think this is what it means. Yes, you are getting mm. things from God and then heralding into, into the world, like feeding the world. Wow. Hairs from God and then we are feeding the world. So hairs and heralds. Wow. Okay. Now I understand. <laughs> Sorry, I had to dig into it. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Because yeah, okay. okay. I know we, okay, we, we briefly talked about it behind the scene. But yes. um, I'm just like, you know what? I, I'm still going to find out. Uh, it's a wonderful name, by the way. And, um, um, uh, you know, I'm Thank glad you to much. have you Thank on you. the show. So, um, you. like you said, you wear many caps, right? You do different things. You, 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 you're into poetry. You're into, um, you know, every, uh, every other aspect of um, agriculture. But we are here to talk about um, vegetable farming and how we can maximize profit yes. in it. You understand? Yes. So, yes. as a vegetable farmer, what is the very first thing that, you know, a new person would, would should think about? Well, what should I, you know, I okay, I want to get into farming and someone asks me, what, what kind of farming do you want? And I say, okay, I want to get into crop vegetable farming. What, how should I be, my reasoning be, what should my reasoning be in that kind of aspect? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ayo, for, for that question. That question is very salient and then it's related to the topic. You know, when I saw the topic, I was like, wow, I mean, this topic is carefully crafted and then, you know, not just uh, unpicked or, you know, uh, yeah. just thought of. So I'm, I'm sincere. So reason being that okay i think i'll answer that question in in uh, uh in uh, sync with my story okay so i had this colleague he fell away from university days i mean my story started in university days so i can always uh, have things to uh sorry guys you know how it is uh network is um messing up again but um we're, we're going to keep up our head up high and um try to you know get um him back on there so hopefully we should be able to get get him back um uh, you know just um are you okay you're back now yeah so network network was funny can you hear me no now? yeah i can hear you now don't worry about that we, we're used to we're we're used to things like that so yeah okay sorry <laughs> yeah no sorry. it's all right it's sorry okay go on yeah okay so like i was saying back then in university days i had this colleague mm. a fantastic one like he fell lower and then uh, uh we got talking about my passion 
agriculture, what I've done so far, and the likes. And then she picked my interest and she was like, okay, fine. I have, a, I have a friend, I have a network of people that I can mm. probably introduce you to. And then she took me to this CEO of uh, a multinational company. I mean, mm. they deal in millions, um, uh, what, maybe hundreds of millions of dollars. Oh, so we, okay. we were in the meeting, just like in a bar, casually sitting over, over, over drinks. And then, and then the man asked me, okay, so you want to plant cucumber? What is your expected output per hectare? You know? What's the expected output per, per hectare? Hmm. That question thrown me off balance. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I want to plant. I have interest in planting. I've planted before. I have results and the like. Hmm. You know, I was just passionate and then running uh, full speed in the wrong direction or no direction at all. But I had energy, I had hmm. passion, but I was running in no direction. I had no, uh, no end game in plan. Hmm. And then I was mumbling. I was just, you know, uh, blabbing, trying to even calculate because I've not done her plot, which we are used to in Nigeria, and then mm. now to move it to acre and then hectares. So then, then and then, right there, the man lost interest in the position. He took his bed wow. and then he moved on. That taught me a lesson. I'm like, oh, wow. So I had the opportunity to, to, I mean, to get a sponsor, even if maybe not uh, whatever it is, equity loan or grant. Mm. It could be a support, but he just lost interest in the conversation. Being a white man, and that yeah. was hard for him because I don't know what I want to do. I only think I want to do something. So back oh. to the question now. The first thing a farmer has to do, going back to the topic, is an art and science to what we are doing. You know, mm. gone are the days. You, you, I mean, rightfully said in the introduction, Mr. Ayo, that this is not, we are not doing things the way our parents were doing it, the way our grandfathers were doing agriculture. Mm. We don't just go to the field and begin to plant our seeds blindly without any expectation. So as a farmer, the first thing to know is uh, know your input. Know your input. That's the heart and there's, there's a science to it. You know, science. like we said, as long as the heart remain, seed time and harvest mm. will forever remain. So, I mean, so there's, there's a seed and there's an harvest. If you don't know the input you are using, some people, you know, they just probably have an hectare, have land. They don't know how they can maximize the expected maximize output it, by, yeah. Per, 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 per plot or per acre and how they can maximize it's only when you know the expected yield that you can probably you know try and get a better yield assuming that from 10 from one acre of tomato you are supposed to get 20 metric tons if that idea is at the back of your mind you have to probably maximize your input to get the expected and desired output if you don't yeah. know that you just plant blindly you plant all the expanse of land and we are seeing, let's say, you see a cap star, which is less than one ton or two tons. You are glad that you did something. Meanwhile, you should have done a 30-toner. <laughs> you know, so you, you are happy, you are excited that you did something. And then, like I said, there's no result, result afterwards. So there's an art and science to planting, to agriculture. So yeah. you should know that, okay, this is, I'm, I'm putting a seed to the ground. What's my desired output? You can be pessimistic about it. You can be optimistic and you can be realistic. But you should know that there's a desired yield. yield and then yep. what can make me get this yield? Do I need to have this input? What fertilizer do I need to drive this input? Am I using mm. fertilizer? Am I using manure? Am I using pesticide? Am I using insecticides? What am I using specifically that will make me get this output? And then what rainfall pattern, what mm. humidity level will make me get this output? This is what brings, I mean, brings us to another topic. Maybe, I mean, you know, trying to get into precision agriculture. Yeah. Like, you are applying one liter of water to get a kg of tomato. And mm. like, you are very sure that if you are applying this, you are getting that. It's a garbage in, garbage out stuff. If you don't garbage have that, in, you garbage out, apply, yeah. then you have no results. I think I'll be mm. talking too much. I think I should. No, no, no. Gee, the, the show, this is what the show is about. It's about someone right. like you that would give us the kind of information. In fact, I, I'm, I'm always very glad to just keep quiet and listen because I'm learning just as a viewer. I'm, I always right. put myself in that aspect that I'm a viewer as well. So I'm learning from you. So if you're talking, don't worry. That's what the show is all about. <laughs> you get what I'm okay. saying? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm, so, sure I'm not taking too much time on no, 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 at all. How many questions it's, we have? Ah, it's all right. Okay, so, it's totally okay. okay. Okay, 
Okay, perfect. So, like I said, that, that brought me to precision agriculture. So, mm-hmm. mo- most importantly, you know, I was trying to talk about seeds too. I mean, the value chain is very long. It's very wide. As an agriculturist, as a farmer, you should know where you want to play. No man is an island. That's yeah. what people that did it earlier than us failed in some aspects. I mean, I've, I've failed before too. So, you know, you can play in the seed area. In Nigeria, unfortunately, we don't have viable seed. We, all, we import all our seeds. Okay. All our seeds are imported. So anything you can think of, even to corn, to maize, maize mm. that imported, I mean, you know, vegetable, tomato, okra, cucumber, watermelon, onions, habaneros, cut pepper, uh, scotch bonnet, and the like, you know, all these things are imported. So as a person, as a farmer in Nigeria, you can say you want to be farming seeds. That's your forte. Mm. My own forte, I want to be cultivating seeds because truth be told, I mean, okay, let me take us back to, I mean, to recent times when uh, there was this, a, a communal class between uh, Southerners and Northerners when they stopped uh, food, uh, supply of food to, to, to yeah. the West. Yeah. That's to show us that there could be, even the way we have maybe any war, uh, glo- any, any global war, there could be food war. And food mm. war is the most dangerous war. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it could be cold, but it speaks volume when you don't mm. have any supply locally. So what happens when there's cut of shop, or supply from foreign countries, mm. from Australia, from Canada, sort of supply of seeds from... I mean, that happened even during COVID, where there was no supply from America or maybe from Germany, from Australia, yeah. and then we had nothing to probably plant, but we were falling, falling back on what we export, imported before that time. So we should know the area I want to play. The seed is very wide, like I very said earlier, wide. and it can probably go into organic manure production. The northerners come, you know, back, back gone are the days when uh, manure was free from any farm. I, I, like I said, we have a lot of farms in a where I consult for. You see these tonner, 30 tonner trucks packed all mm. the way from Jos, all the way from Niger, all the way from Adamawa, wow. coming to pack manure. Initially, it used to be free. Mm. Come and just pack they usually, they like, used to look for people to get rid of them. It. Yeah. That co- just come and get it. <laughs> But now yeah. it's paid for because we now know that okay, so someone that came all the way to pay maybe four hundred and thirty thousand dollars to pack garbage should know that there's something that the person came for is value. So, like I mentioned earlier, let okay, let me just relate with, with all of this. You know, eventually I planted something, you know, back to our story with my with my Lebanese friend, the CEO. I planted something eventually, I planted a timber and uh, other vegetables the output was fantastic the output was very good the outcome was very good the yield was fine but eventually there was no market mm. you know everybody will say that there's market everywhere mile two mile <laughs> two market you do market you know kara k2 but when the others came there was no market to sell to I took it to mm. nearby places. I mean, OJ Market in Ibadan. I took it to nearby markets and they were pricing it for 1000 per bag. What mm. I had, like, let's say over five, I mean, let's say 400, two, uh, 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 what was it called now? What, uh, 400 cucumbers inside the bag. They were pricing yeah. for 1000 What well, I know that I buy for 400 per one, 500, 1000 for one, and they are pricing for 1000 per one bag. So that was a challenge for me. So what I'm saying is this that if your market is probably going to interlands to farmers to go and buy i mean uh their proceeds and begin to sell mm. that's a, that's something to do too because there's an heart and there's a science production doesn't end till it gets to the table of the consumer that's when you know that you're a successful producer if you yeah. produce and then eventually end up in in the dustbin incinerator then you have failed because all your effort has gone into the incinerator into waste yeah so yeah into waste so now we should try as much as possible to maximize our space. I was going to say that again, you know. And then as much as the audience we have, I mean, the viewers we have on this program now, I want to advise us. For me now, presently, on our farm, we have sack farming. I mean, the pepper in my house now that people are, you know, we are eating and we, are, we have gifted to many people. We have dashed out to a lot of people. is from the farm. And it's from sack. I, I, I know maybe just six or seven sacks. 
and the output, the outcome is so is so encouraging, is so lovely that I mean, I've harvested and given a lot of people. So, so I'm, I'm just going to stop you there. You mean um, you planted them in a in a sack, right? In a sack. So yes, the sun is behind. actually in a sack. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So. So I'm going to encourage, I mean, it's not just coming to watch and say, what are they going to do? This was, was the series this week. No. I want us to go back as viewers to go and practice this. I mean, just get maybe a, 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 a cement bag, you know, put manure, put uh, soil, and then introduce any seed. It could be seed from the pepper you bought. It could be seed from the tomato you watch in your kitchen. It could be seed from okra. It could be seed from anything. Just plant it and forget it. Before you know it, begin to germinate and then bring forth fruit. I can tell you, you will never regret this. So I don't want you to just come on board and see what we are doing, probably listen and not do anything. I want to implore you. I want to implore you as much as you can. Get back behind you, in your maybe behind your bedroom, behind your uh, compound. In, I mean, we have a lot of uh, land wasting in Nigeria that we're mm. not maximizing. So now I want to employ, like I said again, please and please do this for, for, for Farm Ops TV and show your, let, let's be the next uh, speaker that will come over and say, I listened to a program some time ago and then I practiced what he said and this is my success story. I want to employ you, please do that for us. Wow, thank you so much. Um, it's, it's just been uh, wonderful talking to you, Olaolua. You, you're inspiring and um thank i'm so much. glad to have you on the show um you. you know i always love talking to guests like like you you make my job a lot easier because mm. half of the time i don't get to see anything because you you touch base on almost everything i want to ask you you've talked about the land side maximizing land you know planting and almost all my question you've answered in a stretch <laughs> you hey, understand well, so you very, it's always it's it's always wonderful talking to you know someone like you that knows what they're doing and it's it's because you've gone through it as well just like from mm. your experience with the um the foreign partner that you talked about yes. that yes. you know he asked a simple question and you just could not it threw you off you understand so <laughs> you, you you get so you've gone through the good and the bad and thank 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 god now it's all success from here on you understand yeah, so uh, uh like you said my other question is not is, is not even a question anymore it's just you know me just trying to pick on 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 you what will be um the easiest crops you would advise someone that's just starting to go into okay thank you thank you very much for that Okay, so sincerely, all vegetables are, are very easy to cultivate. You know, they are, they are, so depending on the terrain anyway, depending on where you are. So for me, I'll probably say a vegetable, let's say, uh, uh, F4, I mean, tete, F4, green vegetables mm. yeah. uh, and the likes, it will do because these are what we consume daily. So imagine that you have something like this behind you and ugu ugu i mean mm. people people you know how they say the benefits of ugu ugu oh, yeah. leaves, yes. ugu leaves and the like replenishes mm. your blood and like yes. all these things i mean so and it depends on the area or where the person is staying because like i said on my farm now i have someone that came to my store to say that okay i want to buy i want to buy uh herbicides i want to buy insects because all my fruits, I mean, the, the fruity flowers are going down just by themselves. They are dropping by themselves. Mm. Meanwhile, I had my vegetable just behind the compound and no one flower or no one fruit came by, by, down by itself. We had to harvest everything mm. I wanted to, uh, to harvest. Yes. But where he is staying, he had a peculiar problem, you know, of uh, the insect pests or maybe white flies mm. of bugs. You know, those are the insects are uh, pests of uh, of vegetables. So, depending on the area you have, you know, you can probably buy as many seeds as possible. Like I said, vegetables of let's say, uh, for it will do ugu ugu leaves when well taken care of, as little or minimal disease infestation. The only challenge you probably have 
is let's say white flies and when you notice that early i was going to say something about insect pests and uh, input um, our application because uh-huh. we have challenges of exporting our produce or some consumers you know i was exposed to to to, to the challenges that maybe some farmers face and some consumers might face because for vegetable you probably apply insecticide even some days to harvest which is not healthy mm. for the consumer. As much as I can, I try to avoid eating cucumber from outside if I don't plant from my farm. Mm. Because I know that you can apply in, um, insecticide today, which is very poisonous, and then poisonous, harvest yeah. tomorrow and sell. And that mm. thing takes seven days before it disappears from the plant, from, from the fruit. From the fruit. You know, so that's why, the reason why we should probably try as much as possible to plant all these things by ourselves, because you know the source and then if you have all these things done by yourself you can boast of the chemical input level that you're having in the fruit and then there are a lot of organic pesticides that we can use nowadays you can use pepper you can use uh, uh what's it called now uh don't go yarrow leaves you know i mean well taking care of soap and milk you can probably apply there's no insects that will come and milk the chlorophyll in the plant so all these mm. things are trying as much as possible to one master your environment see that if there are insect pests around the environment know that because if you have more insect pests they will probably affect they will eat the the, the leaves from day one because all of day them are part yes. of leaves that we want to eat to leaf miners you know they want to probably take the chlorophyll that we mm. are all after too as human beings from the leaves so they want to probably eat it before you get there so it's try as much as possible to control them so a four a four thirty it will do and ugu, you know, people consume this every day. There's no even even if you're you not going to sell in the markets, can sell to your neighbor, you can sell to your friends in the office, you can sell to anybody. Just take it to church, to mosque, or anywhere that you belong to. You know, I have a ready for sale. You know, when they stand, they see how heavy it is. They probably pay for it immediately, and then you sell. You have what you you need from there. You have to exchange uh, products for money as fast as you can. Okay, thank you so much um thank you guys for joining us for being part of the show uh you're 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 still on farmer up tv and um i can see right now that we have about um 500 plus um, people online watching the show right now uh thank you everybody for being part of the show and uh, remember that this is farmer up tv and our guest today is olao lua bamigoe who is um, an agribusiness specialist of hers and Harrod um, Farms. And um, um, Laulu, where is your farm located? Lagos, Nigeria. Okay, so that's um, Lagos, like Nigeria. That's where the farm is. um, Yes. Yeah, um, you know, so I'm going to come back to one thing you mentioned before, which I know I've asked you about, about planting in sacks. So how Planting do you what? prepare okay, sacks. Okay. in sacks? Yeah, how do you prepare the soil for such? Do you just go out, get some soil, put it in, or do you have a special soil you have to use? Um, you know, how do you go about the process in doing that? Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, so sorry, is it, is, it, is it a bit dark in my background? It's okay. And you I probably have a background noise. I'm so I apologize for that. It's, it's so, totally uh, good. We can hear you perfectly, okay. and you know that's you know, important. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So, I mean, everybody knows in Nigeria that if you throw a seed of grain on the on the street, even on the highway, <laughs> it will germinate. Hmm. I mean, you can bear witness. Anybody can bear witness to that. So, essentially, except if the soil is bad, that I can probably do soil treatment. Any soil, like loamy soil, is good for this kind of uh, cultivation. Just get a loamy soil around you. If you don't have it in your house, or you, some people can have muddy soil. I mean, you can probably take them to germinate. It may not germinate, but as much as you can, get loamy soil. If you can't, you can probably get, I mean, any soil that uh, will take water and then try as much as possible to apply manure, maybe green manure, poultry mm. manure, eating waste manure. You can yes. probably leave it for a while and then mix it together and then fill the sacks. You know, when you mm. get any, any sack, let's say a, a cement pack sack or any nylon, any jerrycan container, even bowls and buckets, 
you know, yeah. just make sure that it's, it's, it's neat, not retaining any compound or chemical that can, that's poisonous to, I mean, for human consumption. Wash it properly and then, you know, put in the soil, wet the first day, the, the next day you can introduce your, your seed. So the soil preparation is not something complex. But now we try as much as possible to, to go soilless, where you have cocoa peats from uh, coconut husk, where you have rice bran, where you have uh, 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 wheat or fowl. I mean, all this, I mean, different stuff that you can use to plant that are not soil, even water, you know, can be used to plant where we have uh, hydroponics. Hydroponics, or, I mean, yeah. Probably beyond the scope of this class. So, you know, uh, we can talk about that later. But I think uh, uh, this one is, uh, yeah, it's not difficult uh, to prepare the soil at all. Oh, okay, especially when when we are, you're talking about um, a country like ours, Nigeria, why, where we're so blessed, yet you know, yes. thing, you know, we just need to do get things the right way. It's everything should be easy back there, um, you know. But you know, we're getting there. You know, when people like you, you know, are putting effort into it without, um, you know, the help of government and all that, you're still doing your best. It's it's always so wonderful. Um, just going to say once again, um, we, we we thank you guys for joining us. Remember to share, like, and subscribe on YouTube and on Facebook. To do go ahead and um, like um, um, the show as well. And if there's anything that you need, you want us to do or to to talk about, do drop a comment as well. And you can also drop a comment on the live um, show right now as well. Sorry, um, I didn't get that network is breaking. Yeah, it's okay. I'm just um, generally talking about the show itself. Uh, so, uh, I, the, my, you see, you've, you've taken everything out of my mouth. All the questions I plan on asking you, you've answered. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you've answered them. <laughs> Which is wonderful, yeah, uh, right? I apologize. No, yeah, apologize. no, no, it's I'm it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It just makes everything a lot easier, right? Um so thank you. It will vegetable farming, basically. How do we well what do we do about sales? How do we, you know, because I remember you mentioning the other time that you know everybody says um it's easy to sell just you know get in it what is the best way to go about it because the whole reason why you want to get into agriculture in the first place is because you want to make profit yes so what do you do about yes. sales how do you go about you know promoting your products selling your products so that you are able to actually cash out that you know, profit that you want to get at the end of the day. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Uh, okay. So, uh, from the first thing, from the desired output to the expected uh, yield, and then, you know, having to say, okay, I'm expecting 10 tons of maize as a person from my farm mm. by June 1. That will drive you to say that you have to reach at least 50 or 100 customers that probably will buy 20 20 kg each yes. of your product or 200 mm. kg each of your product because you know 200 kg by 50 people that's one ton that's mm. i mean 1000 kilogram yeah or you say you have to reach 1000 individuals that will buy one kg each so depending on the desired output or expected issue that you are targeting, targeting you can now know the kind of market you want to reach mm. either it's with paid or free you know we have a lot of tools on our hands right now, right now that we probably don't know how to probably maximize our whatsapp status is there our facebook story is there our i mean technology are simple maybe i mean maybe doing posts sponsored ads on facebook mm. instagram my status different things so from i mean the basic is that the yield or the desire, the expected output to determine how many people you have to reach. How many, so that you yeah. say that you have drawn your table by saying that I have to reach 10,000 people that will buy one kilogram from me each, or mm. 20,000 people that will buy 500 grams from me each, or one millionaire that will buy everything from me just mm. from one transaction. From or one, one transaction, yeah. Maybe primary producer. Mm. 
Wow. Did you hear so, me? Yeah, I get I get everything you said. Thank you. And I'm very sure the viewers too got it. Um, so are there any limits to what um you can be planted on a farm? Are there any, in, are there any, are there any, are there any limits? Like, um, is there any crop that you would think, oh, don't go into it? Like, is there any crop that you would uh, advise someone not to go into? Because probably because of um, um, diseases or probably because of low yields or it's just better management all around. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. The same thing. I mean, I hope the person doesn't call me back again. I'm sorry. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, you can go ahead. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. No, it's okay. It's all right. So, so my, my response is this. I'm an, I, I mean, I hold a master's degree in animal science. I'm an animal management and production. So, the underlying factor there is management. I believe that there's nothing that can be managed. Hmm. Someone's problem is my, is my, is my opportunity. Hmm. Someone's challenge is my opportunity. So, there's nothing that can ever be managed. So mm. if, there's a, if there are challenges in agriculture, maybe leaf miner for maize, maybe white flies for, for green leaves, maybe, uh, you know, different things. You can probably say, I will find a solution. By solving the problem, you have opportunity, you are making money for yourself. Yes. So I will never discourage not planting anything. Mm. Anything you plant and you have a challenge in, I believe can be solved by you organically. Like I said, I discovered, you know, I mean, in, from journals and from books, we read that uh neem plants or neem leaf solves uh leaf miners problem and then other insecticides other pesticides can be replaced by, by using organic ones you know rather than use more uh, inorganic and, and then they are poisonous to our uh, consumption like i said i won't discourage anybody from planting anything when you encounter a challenge read widely to solve that challenge and that remains your intellectual property there and then so like for me, you know, some people run from raising cattle, some people run from raising fish, some people run from raising poultry, some people, I mean, but that's an opportunity for someone that can do it very well to do it and make more money because he has solved the problem for himself and then for the entire place. All right. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to ask you a question about um, a viewer actually posted this online. Um, it's not um, straightforward because we need to know exactly you know what she's talking about but i'm still going to ask you anyway um so it's from o'shea's beauty and um, she says i planted ugu for a week now it hasn't grown yet and i don't know why is there anything you can say about that hello Can you hear me? Hello? Okay, um, unfortunately, uh, Malalua is not able to hear me on his hand. Um, probably has to do with his... Um, um is um audio or something like that uh he's not able to hear me so maybe what we'll do is that uh i'm going to try and call him um direct on the phone see if um we'll be able to get through to him so that we can um you know the, sh the show is fast spent anyway uh hello can you hear me now no still not able to hear me Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Hello? All 
All right. Um, like you said, um, Olaoluwa is not able to hear what um, I was um, talking to him about. Uh, what I'll do is that I'm going to try and connect with him on the phone, and hopefully we might be able to get through to him. Uh, let's see. I might be able to get through to him. So while I'm trying to do that, I'm just going to say thank you so much, guys, for joining us on the show, for being part of the show. And, um, you you know, if you do like what we're doing, do go ahead, like, share, subscribe, and, um, you know, click on the notification button. And also, uh, hello, 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 can you hear me now? Hello, can you hear me? I can, I can hear you now yes okay all right so um i can hear we, you now all right that's good i'm just going to quickly go back to the question um o'shea's beauty asked the question uh, saying that um i planted ugu for a week now it hasn't um hasn't grown yet uh, and um i don't know why so i don't know if you have anything you can say about that question because I, I feel it's okay. not, um, you know, broad enough for us to... Well, just go ahead. No, thank you very much. So, I believe it's a viable question. Thank you very much uh, for okay. the question. So, essentially, the viability of the seed matters a lot, you know? So, mm. the reason why we buy seeds from... Uh, we, the reason why we import seeds sometimes is because our seeds in Nigeria probably sometimes are not viable anymore. Mm. You know, so, after the first generation, Generation, they are not viable for the set. So imagine that you probably hello. Hello. hello? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yeah. So, so essentially. Seed viability matters a whole lot. Mm. The viability of seed and then the position of the of the of the of the seed too in the in the in the soil. You know, because it has a way of germinating. It mm. has it has its way of sprouting, just like uh beans. It has uh, the, the the radical that will shoot out and then begin to germinate. So yeah, you have to be sure that it's positioned properly. And then watering too, how how, how good is, is the soil? And then even watering because you know I don't know where you stay I don't know where the person is uh, residing. There might not be enough water in the soil that makes the feed, the seed dormant. But as soon as water come in contact with the seed, the seed will sprout. So I mean, keep wetting, try and make sure that uh, the seed is properly planted, and then give it another week or two. I'm sure it will sprout. All right, there you have it, um, O'Shea's beauty. You see, while, while I was thinking the question wasn't broad enough, um, you see that um, Ola Olua was able to give us um, different reason why um, your Ugu leaves would not uh, be sprouting. And also for me, Jaye Obatu also answered the question, which is the same thing that um, Ola Olua has um, mentioned as well. Uh, thank you so much for me, Jaye Oba, for doing that. Um, also, um, I think we're just going to try to round up now, uh, because I know we, we're keeping, uh, Mola Olua out and, um, he needs to get back home. It's quite late there. Right. So, um, uh, yeah. So just, um, I would want you to just give us your last words before, you know, I round up. Okay. Thank you very much. So my the, what I'm going to mean to everybody is that uh, uh, we are all farmers. I mean we are we are cultivating something. So let let's try as much as possible to cultivate what you know we can consume as much as we can, no matter how small in our backyard. So like I said, just let the, let the, let this be a take home assignment for everyone on 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 uh, on, on online now that I'm going to plant a seed, a bucket. You know, maybe in the sack or something. Let that be a take home for you. And mm. then, as much as you can, anything you want to do, you probably derive more knowledge by reading more, researching into it. But try as much as you can to have the end goal in mind. Don't just plant blindly, 
expecting something. Expect the realistic, you know, shield from what you are planting. So try as much as you can to learn more. I mean, I know 30 minutes for 30 minutes is probably too short for this class. But oh, like yeah. you said, uh, probably we have to go back to where we are coming from and then we have to go and rest. As much as we can, let's try and fall back on, you know, information and, and try as much as possible to apply this information to what we do. And I'm sure we can be self-sufficient in our food and we can probably begin to think of exporting food to neighboring countries. Thank you so much. Well put together. Uh, I want to say thank you for joining us on the show. Uh, like you said, um, the time we have is pretty short. So definitely we are going to be coming back again to talk to you. This is not going to be your last time on, on the show. And um, we hope um, you'll be able to join us when we call on to you once more. And uh, thank you to everybody that was able to join definitely, us on the show definitely. as well. Um, thank you to Margaret Ogundukwe, who is my mom. Uh, she also has a little farm in the garden there, which is um, Ugu, Okra, St. Leaves, Water Leaf, Bitter Leaf, Moringa, all in a garden back home. <laughs> you understand? So she's doing a little bit as well. And uh, I'm going to say thank you to O'Shea's um, beauty uh, for the question. And I hope um, uh, Paul Lua and also Fumi Jayoba was able to answer your question. Uh, thank you so much, Fumi Jayoba, for also answering the question as well. Um, we're very grateful. And thank you to all the other viewers that was able to join us on the show. Like I said, uh, we were able to eat about 100, um, 500 plus viewers on the show today which is um pretty good um there's a lot of people that want that want to get back into um you know, uh, get back on the farm and um you know like i always say no farmer no food and um we're gonna call it a day today and uh, say thank you once more to um allow lua bang boy um the thank you very much sir. business thank you, um, thank you uh, you know, for joining us. And um, this contact is scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Um, if you, um, you're interested, uh, give him a call. You can see that he's a very strict um, a person. He will give you the information you need, you, you, you know, and um, you, everything should be good um, on the farm. And um, hopefully, um, Olaolua, we will be able to come to your... I'm, I'm very sure to, um, today would want to come to your farm to come and see how things are being done there Everybody's so welcome. Welcome. so uh yeah i'm very sure he's going to give you a call soon to you know to check out how your farm is you know do a little bit tour because we have a series on that where we do farm tours as well and um so he, i'm very sure he would want to do that so thank you so much guys thank you have a wonderful day thank you sir. Uh, thank stay, everyone thank you stay blessed and um as we are about to end the show, um, remember how we always say, no farmer, no food. And um, if you see a farmer, do, you know, say thank you to them because um, they are the one feeding the nation. They go through a lot on the farm to feed, to feed us. And um, we'll see you next time, next week. Um, or even before then, depend if we, you know, we have something to say, which we always do. And um, in joining us next week, we hope everybody will be here with us again. And I'm going to say thank you. Have a wonderful day. Stay. Safe.